But internally for us, it's all about performance, right? Because every day we wake up, there's zero. If we don't create some sort of value, uh, we, don't, we don't get any value ourselves. Welcome to the Post Purchase Pro Podcast. This is the only podcast that dives deep into post-purchase marketing to help Amazon sellers increase sales, ranking, reviews, and profits. It's everything that happens after the initial sale that makes a difference. We call this the back end. This is the Post Purchase Pro Podcast. I am your host today, Seth Stevens, along with my missing co-host, Sean Hart, the first one he's ever missed. But we have a very, very special guest today. It's Yoni Mazur. Oh my gosh, Yoni, I'm so excited to have you. Ever since um, we first met, actually, I've been looking forward to this moment where we could interview you and learn about your story because I'll tell you something, Yoni. Um, we were introduced to you just as like, hey, you should meet this guy. And we get on the phone. The very first conversation we ever have, you just like pour on so many things. You pour on the value. And it's like, we just met you, Yoni. How can you be such a giver? So we were impressed from day one. And then um, after using your service and seeing what you guys are doing with the Gatita, we're even more impressed. So Yoni, um, I am honored to have you as the guest today on the Post Purchase Pro podcast. So let's... Uh, Let's give you the floor here and tell us who Yoni Mazur is, um, how you became a co-founder of Gatita, and what you're up to. You got it. So first of all, thank you so much, Seth. A pleasure to be here. Uh, also an honor to be here. And um, Sean, we miss you. So hopefully we'll see you soon. Um, yeah, so a little bit, I guess, about myself. I guess I'll start from, because I don't know if yeah, I start, start from where beginning. Gatita is. and I, I'll start at the beginning, just like that. Okay, I'll start from where we are now in the beginning. Then I'll touch the beginning, so uh, it's packaged a bit better. So currently, uh, one of the co-founders and uh, chief growth officer of Gatita. In a nutshell, Gatita, we're a data company, a technology company. And our mission is to help Amazon FBA sellers get the maximum FBA reimbursements that they're eligible to receive. Um, so that's kind of our mission. We're the largest organization in the world dedicated just for this mission. We got a team of over 100 people in six countries. We audit billions of dollars worth of transactions every day. Uh, we'll talk about maybe that, more about that later, but Gatita uh, was born actually from uh, our activities as uh, uh, Amazon sellers. So about a decade ago, we started selling online, and the main arena for us back in the day was eBay, right? And then 2013, we started selling on Amazon, and the business grew very quickly from zero to 20 million in FBA sales. And then we became a part of a larger group. Uh, together as a group, we were doing about 100 million in FBA sales. And what happened was we had to audit all these transactions and our spreadsheets were breaking. So that pushed us to create technology and software to be able to uh, handle all the massive amount of data that we're getting daily. That was kind of the first component. And the second thing we did was we created a team, a dedicated team to handle all the data and, and open cases with Amazon and manage all the back and forth until there's a resolution, usually in the format of a reimbursement. So um, all of our inventory that used to get lost, damaged, destroyed, disappeared, disposed, overcharged with fees, the technology catches that and then our team handles that. So effectively, we created this solution for ourselves. It worked pretty nicely for us. And then being, I guess, uh, friendly people, uh, we told our friends from the industry that we have these capabilities. So they told us, help us, we'll pay you. Um, and that was early genesis and creation of Gatita back in 2015. And over the years, uh, uh, it was growing organically because the, um, the way that it's modeled, it's very convenient. It's free to join Gatita. It's free to stay with Gatita. There's no subscription. We're purely performance-based. We call this model PPR, pay per recovery only. Um, and because it grew over the years, or to a nice degree, we just cashed out of our uh, retail positions. We didn't make a splashy exit. We just um, sold all of our inventory and our balance sheet. We had about a, about a $9 million balance sheet in, uh, in our um, organization. And then, um, all, we're, then we'll take, we're able to take all these profits and our energy and focus and motivation and just helping other sellers. And from that point, point on, I would say we probably took leadership on the niche and the space of uh, what we call Amazon FBA auditing and reimbursement. So that's in a nutshell where I'm today and how I got there. Wow, Yoni, I didn't know any of that. So that's amazing. So Yoni, I know <clears throat> like, it seems like your guys' growth strategy is give first, give first, give first and never ask. <laughs> well, how did you guys develop this uh, culture of, of giving and uh, you use it as a marketing strategy, it seems like it's just giving goodwill out there. So how did that all come about and was that existing uh, kind of in the beginning? Uh, I, I came to, to think about this actually very recently, maybe because of you guys um, and, and I'm trying to kind of see uh, what's the origins of this because on the other side, I guess on the, on the outside, it looks like, you know, we're all about giving, which it is true. Um, but internally for us, it's all about performance, right? Because every day we wake up, there's zero. If we don't create some sort of value, uh, we, don't, we don't get any value ourselves. So that's kind of uh, from day one, right? But uh, tracking the roots of it, 
I actually realized that we're very similar to Amazon sellers. Amazon sellers, every day that goes by, they start from zero. If they don't generate sales and the product doesn't, you know, uh, does not generate any sales, they get nothing. So it's also very purely performance based. And we we were sellers, and we exceeded in that terrain. The terrain of we got a source, we got a launch, we got a we got a market, we got a package, we got a you know do finance very well. All these elements that create a good uh, e-commerce organization. Uh, we went through those, I guess, and there was natural evolution for us to to um, succeed in this industry in a niche that actually it's, well, we feel it's, it, we're very privileged because now we're um, you know before we're helping consumers, right? Today we're still helping consumers by helping helping the sellers. So we kind of uh, there's a you know there's a movement in the chain that we're able to to uh, progress into uh, that we find it to be very unique. So it's all about really uh, performance, like we used to do in retail. Um, and outside is just very valuable, valuable because it's appreciated because many other solutions, they might tell you, pay me something first or the set of fees or anything like that. And yep. you don't know, you're very hesitant. We lived in those domains a lot, all the time. As you go into, as an organization, you scale the, all these elements that you need, you start paying. It's not, it's not cheap to do a hundred million revenue, right? It just, there's yeah. so many things around you operationally that you're going to have to pay for. So I guess we, yeah, we do have a deep appreciation for the ones who helped us along the way who are really oriented on performance. So that's kind of, in a nutshell, a little bit about that. I love your model of PPR, pay per recovery, recovery right? Or yeah, so it's basically pay per performance. Like you don't get paid unless you perform. And that's the cleanest business model out there. So I really love your guys' model. So Yoni, tell me the difference that you've kind of experienced. Um, you have ran a very successful Amazon business and you've run a very successful e-commerce um, service provider business. So which one, um, is, is your favorite to run? I'm guessing it's Gatita, but then give me, paint the picture of the differences between the two businesses and how they operate and what you have, to, how you've had to grow as a, an entrepreneur to be able to, to grow Gatita. You got it. Uh, you're attacking me with all these angles. It's, it's good. I got to, I'm really have to, you know, uh, store my brain right now and, and figure this out. <laughs> but uh, a few key elements are as follows. First of all, uh, obviously the main uh, uh, suspects of uh, the difference are the, the inventory. See, once you're a retailer, you're, uh, you're an Amazon seller, inventory is your driver, it's your force. So the more you're able yeah. to source inventory and it's good inventory that sells, boom, sales just grow. And it's, it's, um, it's a bit sim more simple in a way. You just know, I'm gonna source it, I'm gonna launch it, I'm gonna create it, there's gonna be revenue and there's gonna be the margin, it's all good. Um, and we were very good at that. We're very good at sourcing, very good at putting stuff on the market. We're so bullish, it was like a volcano. With uh, with helping other sellers and being uh, you know purely performance based and, and it's all based on technology and our, our team's ability to understand all these elements and uh, all the numbers because effectively deep, deep down inside we're auditors we focus on minuses right and once we find yeah. a minus we need to adjust it so it's a zero right so if there's one unit minus one is lost and it's eligible for reimbursement by Amazon um, they're gonna have to do a plus one and boom the adjustment goes to, into zero so it has all these elements of uh, accounting by the way um, so it's very intelligent. And our biggest adversary um, was lack of uh, awareness. Just sellers are not even aware that they owed anything. So let's yeah. backtrack a little bit to the, the narrative here, just so people understand what the listeners and the viewers. So when you sell an Amazon FBA, um, Amazon allows you to go back up to 18 months on all your FBA transactions, right? So any of your inventory that gets lost or damaged or destroyed or disappears or overcharged with fees, uh, you're able to, uh, uh, Amazon uh, uh, expects you to audit that and find it with those issues. And once you do, you got to open a case and present it to them so they can consider and also investigate further and see if you're eligible for reimbursement. So that is the premise. Uh, and we found out that the, the world of Amazon sellers is almost split into the middle, right? Half of the sellers are not even aware that there's an issue. They have to go back and audit. Zero awareness, right? So we have to educate them. How do we help somebody who doesn't know they, don't, they need help, right? So that, that's kind of one mission that we have in front of us. And the other half, um, they're kind of aware about it. They maybe do something. They have a team for it. Maybe, maybe another provider, it's all good. But they don't know how much more they can get. If they're eligible to get thirty thousand, they might be only getting five or, or ten thousand. They just don't know what they don't know because it's, it's so much a variety of issues that that are that is there that's available for the sellers. You just have to be able to to hone it, go deep down, and extract all that value. Um, so it's very intelligent, and and that is our driver: education and awareness. So we're just selling potential. We're just uh, selling opportunity. So because you know we tell you something like this. Uh, first of all, our motto is: you, the seller, you do everything that you can do to get all your money back independently. And once you did that, we're able to come in and only if we're able to get you more value or more reimbursements, only then we're gonna charge you a fee, right? And once the sellers realize this is the opportunity that's in front of them, they try it out. And usually it works pretty well because 
we're able to, because we audit billions of dollars worth of transactions every day, we have so much uh, depth in, in our ability to go down into the data and find opportunities, financial opportunities for recovery. Uh, and, but, you know, it took all these years and all these layers of, 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 of intelligent work and educational work uh, to, to, to be able to have all that volume and all that uh, revenue coming in today, as opposed to uh, retail where you can raise a million dollars or five million, you can source all these products and boom, your business in, in, in big numbers. Uh, it wasn't that simple with technology and helping other sellers. That's kind of the main key elements I, I would um, you know, yeah, uh, point to so, today. So Yoni, in our business, Post Purchase Pro, we work with a higher level caliber of, of seller. Um, we work with people that are doing multi-million dollars a year on average. So a lot of our sellers are big sellers. And when we have this conversation, they're like, what do you mean reimbursements? And so it's the same issue that they don't even, they're not even aware. So Yoni, let's paint the picture of why somebody, why an Amazon seller would be due a reimbursement. We've had Amazon lose an entire pallet worth of our inventory before. It was $12,000. But if, a, if it was smaller, we wouldn't ever have caught it because, I mean, it would have just flown underneath the radar. We've lost tons of money on, on different um, ways that Amazon mischarges us. So tell us, Yoni, how are Amazon sellers losing money and uh, what would they do about it if they wanted to do it themselves? And then how do you guys step in and catch that? You got it. So let's uh, touch a few elements. So hopefully you'll, you'll understand the, 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 uh, this whole game. Um, so you want to ship your products to FBA. You got 1,000 units. You're shipping 1,000 units to Amazon's Fulfillment Center. Amazon, instead of receiving 1,000 units, they only received 190. So uh, 10 units are missing. In order to, so if you never heard of that, that, that you, or you never understood that you need to reconcile that, you do. So after this uh, show or episode, make sure you go to Amazon Sales Central, go to inventory, manage FBA shipments, and look at your shipment log. And all these shipments that you shipped 1,000, they only received 190, go inside and reconcile it. And tell them, please investigate. Or you shipped uh, 500 units, you only got uh, 400 units, please investigate. Amazon's not going to automatically investigate and reimburse you. They expect you to take the action. So if you're not aware of this, now you are, boom. Not game over, the game begins, by the way. Yep. Uh, so that's just one, this is more elementary level. This is what most sellers, it's also kind of logical, makes sense. You should, you should care about your inventory. You're shipping from one location to another. Same thing with Amazon, same thing to anywhere. You know, you're shipping, maybe if you do wholesale, you're shipping it to uh, Walmart, to, to Target. Things are going to get reconciled. So the, based on the same, uh, you know, elements of logistics, it makes sense. Okay. Now you gotta understand that once your units are inside Amazon's fulfillment center, this is where it gets hazy and most sellers don't realize. Inside Amazon's fulfillment center, your units can get lost or damaged or destroyed, uh, destroyed or disposed or get overcharged with fees inside the center after it got received, but also between the <clears throat> between the centers. Amazon might ship your products from uh, Kentucky to California, California to Nevada to have a spread for one one day prime shipping, right? So these same five six elements happen as well from the fulfillment centers. To the consumers, as the orders come in, same elements happen. Consumers back to Amazon with all these refunds and uh, you know and returns. And if you do a removal order for, from the fulfillment center back to you, right, the, the seller. So all these five six uh, logistical pr uh, friction points based on these five six elements, it, it's like more than thirty things you got to look into uh, with your auditing. Um, and the way you do it is you got to grab all this all these reports from inside Seller Central from all these databases and cross them all together. So. It's easy. You don't realize you got to do it. And even if you realize you got to do it, it's uh, it's complex. Just to be frank, it just if you're not a wizard with Excel and really good with mathematics and it just becomes uh, almost like, you know, a different foreign language, like a language from out of space. And finding the issue is just the first element. Managing it in front of Amazon and explaining yourself is a different challenge. Right. Uh, the only thing I can maybe compare it to if uh, your ASIN got suspended or God forbid your account got suspended. Many times you don't know what they want from you. What is the, they tell you a reason, but you know what, what they want you to, to explain or, or, or say to them or a plan of action, all these things. Because on the communication level with Amazon, it's very hazy. It's not so like direct. They could have told you, right. they want you to do A, B, C, D. You said, I did it. Here's the proof. Put me back. They don't do that. It's like they, they want you to explain yourself, right? Uh, so in, in, in the very similar elements, once we have the data, we got to be able to explain ourselves properly in a way where Amazon understands it, you know, the other side of the team. And they're okay with it. They say, oh, here's the minus one. We apologize. Here's the reimbursement and move on. So high level, like I said, you have the entry level shipments. And then you have all these uh, things that happen inside the warehouses. Uh, these are more on the logistical side. Here's a few, one example of a few that on the financial side. So let's say your product is um, is a six inches and six ounces. So it's really small tier. Amazon's supposed to charge you $3 every time they fulfill an order. So when the order comes in, they pick it from the bin. They package it in a box and they ship it out. We call it pick and pack fees or fulfillment fees. And they're supposed to charge you $3. 
But for whatever reason, the data that they have on your ASIN, uh, the weight and dimensions inflated for whatever reason. You know, instead of six inches, it's 60 inches. Instead of six ounces, it's six pounds. So now they're charging you $10 per unit instead of $3. So they're financially overcharging you $7 per unit every time you sold it. You sold 1,000 units, boom, $7,000 of overcharges. That's on the financial side of things. So inside our dashboard, we actually have a module where you can input your data on every single ASIN, and we're always on guard for that. So if uh, this issue happens and they start overcharging you with fees, we, Getita, need to do two things for you. First thing is fix the data. So going forward, they stop the overcharges. So you stop the bleeding. And the second thing, we were able to go back. Amazon allows a 90-day recovery for that. So if in the past 90 days, they overcharge you $7,000, we're going to get that for you. If you only do this uh, auditing once a year, and for the whole year, let's say they overcharge you $100,000, and the last 90 days, they only charge you thirty grand, $30,000, you're going to get $30,000 back. The rest of the $70,000, you are never going to see. So it's very important to know the rules of the game and the time limits and, uh, and act upon them uh, so you don't miss out. Uh, yeah, that's kind of um, the mishmash of things you got to uh, look into and uh, take action on. It's just more, more bullets. You know, I always say selling on Amazon is like a war zone. You get all these bullets flying at you, sourcing, logistics, global supply chain, PPC, uh, finance, hiring, HR, suspensions, auditing. Auditing, if it's not in your 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 one of these bullets you, you try to protect yourself, it probably means you're leaving money behind and it's your money that you're eligible to to get it. And that's not wise because you want that money to be back in your pocket. So you're going to be able to reinvest it, right? And it keeps sourcing, launching, and doing all these things that create a business and revenue uh, and makes you basically hopefully happy also financially and emotionally. Oh, wow, Yoni. So when we started selling in 2014, we launched a lot of products really quickly. We had a lot of revenue. We had a lot of things to worry about, right? You have to worry about marketing and creating sales and shipping the thing in. But then you go back and you look, well, Amazon lost a pallet of my goods. Amazon mismeasured one of my units. So Yoni, this is a, a funny story. We used to sell memory foam pillows and they were vacuum sealed. And one of if the if the package got torn on the way into Amazon, it would it would um, swell up. And so then they would measure that one. And the rest of them are undersized. So we should get charged like $4 per unit. They measure the big one because it got ripped and it's like $12 a unit. And they charge every single unit $12. And yeah, it's enough for them to like, one, one time to have that data noise and boom, you're locked into, into higher fees, which is very painful. Exactly. So we're paying higher fees and, and we didn't notice it for a while. So we're overpaying, overpaying, overpaying. And we get to the end of the month and we do our accounting and we say, why is our profit lower? And if we if it wouldn't if it wouldn't have been such a big selling product for us, Yoni, we never ever would have caught it. So then we had to have somebody sit there every single day and scroll through the listings and say, are they charging us more than they should? If they are, then go and um, hustle down the refund. It's such a pain. So we would have loved to say, Gatita, just handle this because we don't have the time or the bandwidth um, to manage this huge process of fighting for returns. And the reason why I really love you guys is because you're not saying pay us a retainer every month. And if we find something, that'll be good. You're saying we're only going to charge you when we find something that benefits you and brings it back to you. And then you keep a piece of it. So I really, really love your business model, Yoni. And I've experienced the pain of what you guys solve firsthand for years. So kudos to you for putting together such a solution. So Yoni, if, um, you're speaking to an Amazon seller right now. Like, what's the thing that they need to be thinking about to kind of put this into action um, with Gatita and start um, seeing what's available? Like, how can they get a sense of um, what reimbursements they're due right now? Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, it's pretty straightforward. You can just uh, visit Gatita.com. There's a nice button called free sign up. Uh, so uh, it will make sure that you uh, it's free, even though it's always free to join. Uh, once you log into Gatita uh, and connect, that's actually there's a whole experience. We actually have a platform, a dashboard. So in the dashboard, over uh, you know after a few days, um, it's going to populate free data if you ever need it. It's going to show you a potential recovery. If it's one thousand dollars, ten thousand, a hundred thousand, whatever the amount is, that's what it is. Um, so you're able to get you know visibility for free. And then inside of you, there's also modules like I mentioned for the pick and pack for the auditing. You can put your ASINs and we can uh, uh, get to work there. There's another module for all the inbound shipments. So every shipment that you ship to FBA, what's the status of each shipment? What's going on? And if, there, if it needs reconciliation, and if it does, if it needs documentation, which ones and what's going on? And did it get paid? Did it not, did it not get paid? So you get real-time visibility on everything that's going on on your FBA auditing and, and needs, basically. It's a funny thing because we actually won the gold award from the American Business Awards for our dashboard technology because effectively, uh, behind the scene, uh, there's, uh, there's a whole army working on your behalf. But all that work is translated to a dashboard in real time so you can you get visibility of what's going on. And of course, if you like us to you know do work for you and, and open cases and manage them, 
you'll see all the cases that were opening and what's the status of each one. Did it get paid? Did it get rejected? Is, is it still pending? How much money recovered in the past 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, and so forth. So for that bridge between the human and, and the, the, the technological, uh, we won the, the gold award with the innovation of that. Um, yeah, that's, that's just that. You know, you just log in, it's free. And then uh, just on a technical side, if you want to join Gatito, there's four steps. Basic information, API connection, right? MWS token, billing information, and then we have a limited user permission. So uh, we're able to uh, log into the account and take further action if needed. Um, so that's a little bit about the dashboard, the experience, and yeah. how do you technically kind of join? So Yoni, if uh, if I'm a seller selling a million dollars a year, roughly what should I be expecting in terms of how much Amazon's losing my inventory? Like what do you normally see on average? So high, high level across the board for our clients, yeah. we see, um, you know, the discrepancy rate on an annual basis is between one to three percent. So if you do a million a year, you know that discrepancy rate can range between ten to thirty thousand. Another yeah. way to look at it is uh, uh, that for every one hundred units you ship to Amazon fulfillment centers, uh, between one to three units will experience an issue of discrepancy throughout the life cycle of the product and inventory uh, on a logistical side and financial side uh, within Amazon's fulfillment centers. So uh, if you do a million, if you do a hundred grand, once again one to three percent, kind of a, a rule of thumb. But I must say. This is across the board, this is the spectrum. One seller can have a 7% discrepancy rate, another mm -hmm. seller can have a half a percent discrepancy rate, and they, they all kind of uh, balance out between one to 3%. And the reason is because no single product is created uh, uh, equally. Uh, for example, if you're selling uh, glass cups, wine cups, uh, uh, and it's glassware basically, that tends to get damaged much more than uh, a pillowcase, right? Yeah. So you have more of these elements, and that's one thing to consider, uh, you know, a, a variance, but, um, there's also different fulfillment centers. Maybe your fulfillment center is a little sloppy as opposed to uh, another fulfillment or 3PL or factory that is able to really package it everything properly and, and report everything properly so there's no uh, miss, you know, there's no issues later on. And on the other side, on Amazon side, one fulfillment center can be more successful or more accurate or uh, more competent than the other. So there's a lot of, a lot of noise and variation of, of issues, but high level one to 3% on an annual basis. Wow, so that is a significant piece of your net profit that's like disappearing. Um, I mean, a lot of Amazon businesses have 10% margins, 15% margins. If you're missing, you know, three to 7% of your inventory or of your revenue, right? That's what you're quoting, right? Is, is. Yeah. Let's take a small revenue. example. You, you hit the seven figures. You made a million dollars in revenue. Great. Your net net margin is how much? Uh, said what? 10%, 15% net net after all the headaches. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Let's say 15%. You did amazingly well. Okay, good. So you got 150 grand in your net net profit. Okay. But let's say the discrepancy rate on the annual basis was 10,000 and you got it back. So add 10,000 to, um, to 150,000 and it's almost 10% bump. Yep. That 1% you recover from the top goes all the way maybe 10% from the bottom. That's on the conservative side. Let's say it's 3%, right? So it's, uh, so it's 30,000 from the 150, it's a 20% bump on your, on your bottom line. So it's very dramatic because the bottom line is very hard to, to, uh, yep. to you know, for money, it's very hard to trickle and, 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 and uh, increase itself on these bottom lines because all these uh, pressures and all these costs around. But uh, were you able to get it from the top and bring it back to your bottom line? It's very, very impactful on the financial side. Um, I do want to mention a small issue, uh, thing here to consider is that hopefully you did very well for your business and you grew it and you're making profit. It's all good. But today there's a very high trend. You probably have noticed that um, selling your Amazon business. And if yep. you're selling your Amazon business, uh, whoever's buying it, they're buying your EBITDA, your earnings, your, your profit, and they're paying you a multiple for that. So imagine you get a multiple of a five, right? A five X multiple. And, uh, you're able to get ten thousand dollars back. All of a sudden, that ten thousand is worth fifty thousand because every dollar you you add to your uh, profit, boom, gets multiplied by five. So that can be also very impactful on the way out. Uh, and on the flip side, if you're just buying an Amazon business and whoever sold you the Amazon business, they left all this money behind. They never uh, bothered uh, getting it out. Uh, that's what they do. These a lot of these aggregators are very smart financially and they're very savvy. They buy all these uh, assets, all these accounts, and then they go back eighteen months and boom, flush themselves with all this cash that was available. And they're able to buy more and do whatever they need to do with the money. But uh, hopefully, you know, you always uh, listening to this and watching this, you'll be on the right side of the game um, because you have the awareness. I love it. So, Yoni, basically, there's an opportunity in almost every Amazon account that hasn't been actively doing this, where most likely there's there's profit, pure profit that's sitting there as reimbursements that you guys can help them collect. So I love it, Yoni. Um, we are getting close on time. We love to ask two questions every single uh time we do a podcast and then I'm going to let you make a very special offer. I know you have something prepared, so it's going to be amazing. But first of all, Yoni, what is your favorite business book? 
Uh, one that I've read lately is uh, Jack Welsh, uh, Straight from the Gut. He was the CEO of General Electric for about 20 years, I think from 1980 to 2000, and took uh, General Electric, a huge company, over 100 years old. He took it from, uh, I believe, 20 billion in revenue to 100 billion. So how do you 5X a monster like that? It was amazing yeah. to, to see uh, what he was able to do internally to, to uh, generate that growth. So I was very impressed by that book. Amazing. So the next question, Yoni, is uh, what has been like your favorite splurge purchase that you've made? Um, you know, something that, you know, it seems like as entrepreneurs, we think like getting this money will will make us happier. And a lot of times you buy something and then you have buyer's remorse and it doesn't really like, you know, you're not really satisfied with that purchase. But what's something you bought and you're like, yes, I'm really glad that I, I made that purchase. Um, it's very hard for me. I, uh, I kind of, um, very frugal. I'm very frugal. I, uh, I don't yeah, splurge too. too much. So, uh, I, 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 my wife buys clothes if I need, you know, she sees I'm, I'm already torn up. She just <laughs> buys me. So I mean, maybe for her it's a splurge, but I'll tell you this in a different angle. Um, it, it's been a period, uh, this year is 2022 in January. We took a getaway, uh, you know, a vacation with my family after four years, I mean, it was four years straight that as a family, we didn't really take a vacation together. So that, uh, so that felt like, oh, you know, well-deserved. Finally, because COVID hit, every time we wanted to go, yeah. it was an issue. And then we also had a baby and uh, it, it was just getting busy at work. So about four years, it was, you know, we didn't uh, take a vacation together as a family. And uh, this January of 2022, we're able to do it. We went to Florida and it felt very rewarding and it felt a little splurgy uh, because I got myself a nicer car when I, I rented a car. I went to uh, the, the best restaurants. I didn't even look at the bill. Whatever you guys want, it's been four years all in so we had a great time and uh it was a big pleasure i don't think you're ever going to regret that yoni so um let, that's amazing let's take this thing out of here yoni tell us what you have for the post purchase pro podcast i know um, there's a lot of amazon sellers out there that need your guys's help so let's make them an offer yoni what do you got you guys so uh on top of being free to join uh, actually we can guarantee that you'll make some money hopefully so um we prepared a 400 dollars offer for you guys so no matter what uh, by connecting to getita and joining and uh, the first 400 dollars that we're gonna get for you an FBA reimbursements will be free. We're not gonna charge you a penny. And after $400, if you wanna leave us, that's fine. If you wanna stay, that's fine as well. Uh, so just visit getida.com forward slash PPP400. So getida is G E T I D A.com. PPP is actually for per, uh, post purchase pro and then 400. Um, so once again, getida.com forward slash PPP400. The first $400 is on us. Uh, hopefully, by taking this 30 minutes uh, of your time uh, focusing on this, it's going to financially reward you and hopefully take you to the next step uh, and level of being a professional seller. And that's the least we can do here, I guess. Amazing, Yoni. So guys, go to getita.com slash PPP400. You're going to get the first $400 worth of reimbursements for free. And then after that, you guys only take a percentage of the reimbursements that you actually collect. I love it. We love you, Yoni. Um, thanks so much for being a giver and um, always supporting a lot of people in the industry. We always uh, look forward to any interaction that we can have with you. So for now, Yoni, let's take this thing out of here. This has been the Post Purchase Pro podcast with our special guest, Yoni Mazur of Gatita. Thanks, guys. Take care, everybody.